The bottom of the hour has arrived. I'd like to welcome everyone to the next installment of the 30 minute workout. I am uh, Alan Gilbert, technical specialist with Autodesk and uh, joining me behind the scenes answering questions as you have them are Angel Espinosa, Jerry Bartles and Jeff Bartles. For those who have joined before, welcome back. If you're new to the 30 minute workout concept, just a little bit of background on that. Um, we are very aware that uh, when you attend traditional training, you're going to cover the things you need to know to get through the training. And uh, a lot of times those additional tips and tricks and other things take a lot of years to discover. And so our goal is to help shorten that learning curve. Full disclosure, today's topic on pressure pipes uh, is a little bit in the gray area, just to be very honest with you, not as many tips and tricks, but we had such um, a large request uh, from all over the world to give an intro to the pop run, the new functionality with pop runs and pressure pops. Uh, we really wanted to uh, do what the customer asked and uh, show this today. So um, I am gonna show some tips and tricks as I go, but this will be a little more workflow driven than uh, what you've seen in the past. Just a few ground rules. The examples you see sometimes are abstract in nature. We will end on time no matter what. And uh, these sessions are recorded, so don't worry about um, you know missing anything or trying to write everything down. Those will be sent out uh, early next week. And please, if you would, place your questions in the Q&A pane, not the chat pane. The chat pane is a great place to say hello, but the Q&A pane is where the uh, team is looking for questions and we'll try to answer uh, as we go. And if not, if we can't answer it, we'll get back to you. So here's the agenda for today. We're gonna to start with a fast review of setting up your pressure content. This is really hasn't changed prior to the new pop run functionality. So I'm gonna just really fast show you what I have set up. And that may help someone that's new that uh, has not set up their content before. Then we're gonna dive right into what is a pop run and why do we care? Now these came out in 2021. And the key to remember just right off the bat is uh, think of a pop run as a path-based pressure pop so think about path, alignment and a profile controlling the path. That's really the key. Once you get that straight, that is very different from what we call part-based uh, piping uh, in previous versions of pressure pipes. So path-based is really the key. We'll go into plan view and we will create some pipe runs live and uh, show you in a, a residential subdivision how that might look and uh, get some water to those poor folks. And then uh, we'll talk about some of the implications in profile and, and uh, do some profile work with the pipe runs. We'll talk about quantification and how that works. It really not a big change there, but uh, I just wanna have that set up for continu continuity. And then uh, some additional value at the end as we have time, we'll talk about some other places that pipe runs can really help, especially because they're based on alignment and profiles now, or at least their path is controlled by alignments and profiles. Because we are strive to be PowerPoint free during our presentation, we're gonna drop out of this immediately and jump over to the product. So if, if you remember on the agenda, we wanted to do a fast review of um, the content and how you set up your content for pressure pipe network. So there's really two pieces to the puzzle. It is the catalog, the pressure pipe catalog, and, and basically setting it active. And I do that by going on the home panel to create design, set pressure network catalog. We have several by default, you can have your own, but you set the one you want first that you wanna start building your library or part list inside your drawing from one of, or more of these catalogs, okay? So you set that first, and then you begin building your part list that will connect to your drawing or your template. Okay. Also though, I'm going to go up to the analyze tab here and show you QTO manager. This is where I have a very simple pay item list ready to go because I'm going to link some pay items. You can see I have some pipe of different sizes, a fire hydrant and a few valves, very simple pay item list now, because we want to do quantities later. So the great thing is while we can always assign pay items to objects in the file after we placed them, it's so much easier to go ahead and, um, assign those pay items to the parts in our part list. So that's where we're headed. Let's get to part list. So we've set our catalog and we start building our part list. And I have one here already built. 
Okay, that is under settings, pressure network, parts list. I'm going to edit this parts list and you can see a little bit about it. Notice I have data from four different catalogs. And notice my part list is called just Autodesk Water. So this is my water main or water distribution, potable water, whatever you want to call it, uh, parts list. So I had to grab from multiple catalogs. I wanted it all in one. Some people don't do it that way. Some people want a parts list, all their PVC in one, all of their ductile iron in another, and that's fine. But for just simplicity, I've created a simple one using all these different catalogs. Once the parts list is assigned to the drawing, I can place it in the template and we all have it. Well, let's take a look under my pressure pipes. I only have a few sizes here. This is push on pipe uh, of a variety here. And notice the pay item section. Let's go ahead and assign those since we have that set up. I'm gonna go up here and um, this is 12 inch push on pipe. So there's the 12 inch ductile line pipe. Six inch, let's grab that because I'm gonna use it too. Six inch ductile tighten pipe. I hit apply because I'm always worried. And then I'm going to go to the gate valves and do the same thing. So under purposes, I have a few valves and a fire hydrant. Under fittings, I have a ton of L's and T's and all that's in here as well. But I'm just going to set up a few more pay items while I'm here. This is a gate valve six inch. And then we'll do my 12 inch gate valve as well. And then why not do the hydrant? That's a big quantity item. Okay, one note, um, if you're not familiar with our quantities, we can have formulas to do uh, all types of math on these, as well as you can have subcategories. So very common thing to do in, um, in water distribution is, okay, every time I place a T, I want you to place the associated restraining ring. So if I'm using mechanical joint fittings and I'm tying that to push on pipe, we typically use restrained rings or restraining rings to connect those. And so I could say, okay, every time I quantify this particular gate valve, I need two restraining rings to come along with that. Okay. So you can get into all types of deep things there. So there's my pay items assigned and now I'm ready to go. So my parts list has the pay items assigned, ready to go. And now I can use those uh, in the creation of a network. Okay. So the second bullet was what is a pipe run? Uh, a pipe run is a new way to control the location horizontally with a horizontal align alignment and vertically with a profile. Okay. And it could be a surface profile, a design profile. It doesn't matter. Uh, we, we just really don't care. But I do want you to realize that the uh, existing or the old method is still available. So if I go up to create design and go to pressure pipe creation tools, this will be a part, a um, pipe run or path-based pressure network. So if I wanted to create the old part based, I can go to pressure networks here and say, create pressure pipe network by layout. And that is the old method that uh, ignores the pipe runs. Okay. So I just wanted you to know that that's available if you need it. Okay. I don't think you're going to need it much because most people are, are loving the pipe runs and uh, what they can do for you. Okay. So I have a pressure network already created. You could create it by going here with a right click or up here at the top under creation tools. And I created a single pipe run down this street and I'll show you the pipe. It's a 12 inch pipe running just inside the sidewalk here on this main street. And this was to simulate an existing pipe, okay? And so this gets into why would I use a pipe run? Well, it lets me partition my pipe runs, and that's really the great word for it. It's the best word I could use to describe them into maybe the street that I'm on. So each street gets its own pipe run so I can uh, deal with it separately. And now they're still in the same pressure network, but they're broken up or partitioned into various pipe runs. If you were doing a commercial site, a way to look at it could be, okay, my big loop, because you typically want to have a cross tie loop around uh, connecting maybe two big mains. Uh, as you circle through your commercial site. So that big loop would be a pipe run. And then all of my fire hydrants and maybe my fire lines into the businesses, those would all be their own part or a pipe run. So that I can separate those into what they are. And remember, the key to remember is they're path-based and each one of those gets a horizontal alignment controlling its horizontal position and a profile controlling its vertical position. Okay. So once you get that, you got it and, and uh, it's easy. Okay, 
So I already have one pipe run. You can see it's named Fairview. And I want to create another one inside this same pressure network called Workout. I like to use the ribbon. So let's do that. Uh, to activate the ribbon, I'm going to right click on my pressure network and say edit. And that opens up the uh, big ribbon here. And I want to create a new pipe run. And I want to do an offset all the way down this road here from the, the center line. So I can do a manual, and I will show that later, how to manually place a pipe run. But I'm going to create this time from object. Pipe run from object. I'm going to select the alignment. And you can see the direction. I have to accept the direction with an enter. And I'm going to call this water main tartans. That's the name of the road. But I'm going to put water main so I can identify quickly that alignment. This is gonna be a six inch push on pipe. And I wanna reference my composite surface. So I have a surface made up of my proposed surface on the roadway and my existing ground surface. It's all pasted into one surface. I'm gonna create that surface profile to follow that. That's our new path based. My horizontal offset from that alignment is gonna be 26 feet to the right, which is positive looking up. And I want to put three foot of cover on top of that pipe. So that profile is going to go down three foot and place a new surface profile, basically copying down from that existing or surface or composite surface profile. Let's hit enter. Okay. So notice it started here and goes all the way around. It's in cyan here. That's my six inch pipe all the way down to here. Okay. So let's select it now. What happens when I select the um, pipe run the first time, I basically get alignment edit grips. So all these are just like your, because it is an alignment, right? If I want to select just the, P, the one pipe, I click it again. And now I get just the one pipe. So a two select will get me down to the pipe level, the fitting level, the T, fire hydrant, whatever. Okay. And I want to make my first grip edit here. So, and again, you're gonna see the power of the pipe runs right off the bat. So I'm gonna select with one click, I get the alignment. I'm gonna click lengthen. And as soon as I see the glyph, I'm gonna click and notice it automatically forms the T that is appropriate for that spot. So it's a 12 by six reducing T, okay? Notice the ribbon is still here. I'm gonna go ahead and place some valves. So I'm gonna pick six, six inch valve. Add a pertinence. Notice the glyph when it's ready. And now let's change that and do a 12 inch or two 12 inch valves. Okay, now I'm gonna hit enter because I'm finished adding a pertinences for now. Now, because we typically gonna, we're gonna anchor our valves to our T's, I need to move those or slide them. So I'm gonna click once and click again till I get the grips, that's a two click. Move it closer to indicate that that is uh, anchored. Two clicks. Move that down a little bit. And same thing here. And enter or escape is fine. So notice I'm still editing this pressure network and I'm still editing this pipe run until I go up here and say I want a new pipe run. But let's continue on this pipe run. Let's probably say fire hydrant. So I'm gonna place a fire hydrant right in this area. Now, since I'm creating a new pipe from this pipe run, it's actually gonna be a new pipe run, okay? Remember I said on the commercial example, we're gonna have a new pipe run for those fire hydrant um, layouts. So we're in the same network. I'm gonna to go to add a new pipe run and we'll call this fire hydrant one, six inch pipe, same cover. And notice as soon as I click, I get the glyph. And it will automatically place as soon as I finish the other end of the pipe here near the property line. Notice this compass wants to continue placing, but I'm just going to hit enter because I'm finished. So I automatically get the uh, six by six T and the pipe stub here. So now I need to place my valve, my fire hydrant valve, which is a six inch valve. Now select add a pertinence, wait on the glyph. Okay. And normally, again, I'm gonna hit enter here to stop that appurtenance. So I will click here twice and uh, go ahead and anchor that. It's not a big deal, but for now, but I'll just do it. And now I'm gonna change the appurtenance to fire hydrant, and we're gonna add appurtenance. And there we go.
So there's my fire, first fire hydrant along this pipe run. Let's select the valve, the little pipe nipple, and the fire hydrant. And we'll go to object viewer here. Okay, so that's what you have in 3D space. All right, I might put a valve here, a 12 inch valve there, but we're just gonna skip ahead. Let's go and connect the other end and have this hanging out here in the center of the row. So here's the existing um, pipe run that's a 12 inch in the same network, has to be in the same network. Here's where my six inch pipe stopped because the alignment stopped up here. Remember, grab, click lengthen, wait on the glyph. There's my T, I'll hit enter, oops. And we can add a pertinence if we'd like. Well, let's just do a 12 valve here and then we'll do a six inch valve here. So we won't place a valve on the other side. Okay, so we laid up pipe run by object. We get an alignment, we get the piping, and then we start laying in our pertinences, valves, fittings, whatever we need. Well, let's go back to, you know, we talked about there's another way to create those pipe runs and that is just manually. So I'm gonna add another pipe run, create a pipe run. We'll call this Water Main South Street. And we'll do a six inch. All that's the same. And I'm just gonna start here where it will place the T for me. I'm gonna place another point. Notice I get either a 90 degree, it's a 45 fitting, 22 and a half, 11 and a quarter. So those are my fitting options that I have. Let's do a 90 over and then a 90 down and then enter. So all the fittings are placed. Another cool feature here is if I make an edit, so I'm gonna select, see the alignment grips. Let's move this one over here. And take a look at this is now a 45 and now this is an 11 and a quarter automatically. Well, what if I wanted to get rid of this bend? I don't need this anymore. I'm gonna cross it at an angle and I'm done. Well, where there's a command on the ribbon for that. The one key, and this is a tip and trick here, is to make sure you have the alignment labels up. You've clicked on the pipe and you have the alignment PI labels. That's when these two commands work the best. So I'm gonna to go to remove now a bend and click on the PI and it's done, okay? And so now I could place an end of line fire hydrant maybe. Maybe I put a valve here, a pertinence down here, and then I place a fire hydrant at the very end to close that one up. Okay, so that's the auto placement. You have the compass, the snapping to the compass, all that is controlled up here. You can see the compass visibility and the snapping as well. So let's talk about profiles. That was the third item or fourth item on our agenda. So I'm gonna select the pop run, the long pop run that went all the way around the subdivision here. Notice I get the menu again, and I'm gonna say pop run profile. And what I'm doing here is I'm profiling down the horizontal alignment of the, the uh, pot. So I could also, I could always project this into an existing profile. Don't, don't think you can't do that. But for design sake, I need to cut the profile down the alignment and see what a great thing, right? Now we have that alignment and uh, profile perfectly already created for us. So there's two ways to offset by the fitting is I'll show you first. And uh, here's the composite surface. Notice the three foot, all that was already there. So I'm going to say, draw that in a new profile. And the only thing I need to make sure is I don't have labels here. On these. And we're going to create the profile view. All right. So this is offsetting by the fittings that were in plan view, right? Or the, the, where the pipes and the fittings here were just by default at the PCPT, the way we created the pipe uh, run. But you can see that's offset roughly three foot underneath that composite profile that was built automatically as well. I didn't have to create that. Well, let's change that. I'm going to select the pipe run. Notice all the grips there. We'll come back to that. I'm going to go to pipe run profile and change it to offset by the cut length. Everything else is the same. Update. And notice now we can see the 20 foot cut links that were in my the part settings going all the way down. Okay, so I can make grip changes. I can go here and make a, a lowering, something like that, lower this. Okay, so you can do all that with grips and that's, that's great if you wanna do that. 
But another way to think about it, remember we can update the profile that that pipe run is using. So what if I went to the, and close this, and I went to the profile view and went to create a design profile. I'll just call this water main tart profile. This is more of a layout profile. And what if I just designed, because a lot of people in the past have used 3D polylines just to design the 3D location of their water pipe. Well, here I can use profile tools, layout tools. So I could draw tangents. So I'm just freehanding here, but let's say I went here and let's say I had a lowering, something like this. And then we just kept going. There we go. So now I have a new layout profile. So all I have to do is select my pipe run and I go to the pipe run profile and update instead of the surface profile, let's use the layout profile. But because I wanna ride down that profile, my offset needs to be zero most likely. Make sure it says update. And now I have a really nice looking pipe run down that design profile. So when you wanna just lay this out yourself and you don't wanna deal with the grips and um, you know those manual changes yourself, you can do that. And again, notice it doesn't have the bends, but that's really easy. Remember, if I have the grip selected, the PVIs, I can go and say, add bins right on top of those PVIs. And now I have the appropriate uh, fitting to change in that dirt vertical deflection, okay? So the last thing we're gonna talk about is quantification. You know, we put those pay items on there. So let's go and quantify. If I go up back to the analyze tab, i go to the takeoff button. The QTO manager is already set up and I'll just do everything. And let's change our uh, report here to an HTML. And so because I set those up beforehand, those pay items on the actual part list and settings, as I placed all that is happening for me, I don't have to go back and place any pay items. And I probably would in the real world, right? There's going to be some object I need to quantify that's not in the part list or whatever. But in theory, right, I can set that up and uh, have all that um, quantified for me, which is great. And the last item uh, was really the bonus item is some of the other places because now we have alignments and profiles driving our pressure pipes. And one really obvious place that, that could be a huge benefit is creating your trenching uh, quantities. So if you go and create an assembly just... Um, in the drawing here. And uh, I don't have one built, but if you had like a custom nice ditch or trench, and uh, here's just a default one here, trench with a pipe, I'll change that to, to bottom corner. So there's just a simple corridor that I'm gonna create now. So I can push a corridor down that, I've got a profile and I've got in a horizontal alignment, I have everything, in a surface, I have everything I need. This particular one doesn't seek the existing ground surface. It doesn't work great. But um, this is a great spot for subassembly composer because you could design um, exactly your insertion point and where you're bedding uh, underneath the pipe, how deep and how that goes. Because you can now, if, um, if you don't want to go to the trouble to subassembly composer, in theory, you could come and flip the, make the negative offset, move the pipe above the, the profile. And that would work, but uh, it's a little dangerous because you're messing up your design up here, right? You're, you're doing that just for quarter reasons. And you could do that if you had a dummy profile or something like that. That would, you know, it's no problem with that. But again, because I had everything I need, thanks to the new pipe run, the path based, I'm ready to build a corridor, right? Pick my um, alignment that is associated with my water main, tartans, there it is, boom. And then here's my new profile that I designed. Again, my uh, assembly would have to be going to the right spot to get the bedding of the trench. There is a um, pick my assembly, whatever I named it. If I have a target uh, surface to target, select that and I'm off to the races. All right, so we're getting uh, short on time here. So let's go back. So again, the key today was to introduce and make sure that uh, you all were clear on what the pipe run means to you and how that's different from the, the uh, pre-2021 uh, version. The key to remember is path-based alignment and profile controls the position. And that gives you a plethora of editing capabilities and a plethora of downstream value 
such as what we just showed with corridor, and that's just scratching the surface. Okay. So we talked about creating these in plan view uh, as well as profile view. And then the quantification fell right out because we set our pay items up um, in the beginning. Okay. Well, thanks so much. And uh, I hope this has been beneficial and we look forward to seeing you at our next 30 minute workout. Thanks so much.